So here are the wing tips after being evened up and rounded off. Uh, I'm just going to make them sort of rounded like that. And I've used this length here differently, so there's more of it on here than there is on that wing, which is already longer, so that will even them up nicely. I'm just figuring out where the ailerons are going to go, and I put these pieces of paper on here to help me visualize it. I was trying to find some information online regarding the pros and cons of having a long, thin aileron versus a short, fat one like that. And I couldn't really find anything specific about, about that exact, you know, uh, feature. It seems like the main two things that are important are the surface area and the distance away from the center of the fuselage at which the aileron is going to act. So that'll be, for these rectangular shaped ones, it's just going to be the center of that rectangle there. So rather than concerning yourself too much with the aspect ratio per se, you're probably better off thinking about other considerations that are going to be important. For example, in the case of these wings, they're quite long and thin, so I don't really want to be cutting into them too deeply uh, to, like this one, it's cutting in a little bit deep there, so I've, I'm left with less wing here than I am here. So I'd rather kind of go with this one, I think. Another issue with these particular wings is that I have this spar going through all the way to the end and it's about four centimeters in so if I go any further than four centimeters which is my test piece one here then I'm going to be bumping up against that spar and that I don't really want to do that I just want to <coughs> just want to leave the spar intact what I've got here is basically what I did for the Sky Hunter plane and I just want to do something a little bit different so for this one I'm going to go with these longer, thinner ones. That's uh, three centimeters by 28 centimeters there. On this plane, I'm going to be using these JX servos. Uh, I haven't actually used these particular servos, but I did use the JX brand on Big Red, and they seem to work pretty well, so hopefully they'll be okay here. And I'm going to embed them in the wing the same way as I did for the flying wing plane, which is cut the servo pocket first, put it in there along with the wire, all the way through and then put the glass over the top of that with a bit of packing tape around here to stop um, resin getting into the this cavity here hopefully so it's kind of inconvenient to do it this way because you have to prepare everything before you put the glass on but I think it's preferable to the other way of doing it which is to cut this pocket afterwards and then at least for this one you're going to have to cut into the glass all the way through there which is going to weaken it and I don't don't really want to cut into the glass to do that. And this wing's fairly thin and narrow, and it's pretty hard to get a, a, a channel inside the wing, like actually in, in here, like not touching the surfaces. Uh, on a thicker wing, what I could have done is cut out little holes all the way down to carry the servo cable, but uh, I can't really do that. So what I'm going to do is put it in first and uh, hope that it works all right. And... The other thing that's a little bit different with this plane to the other two is that I'm going to be vacuuming this vacuum bag in this wing, which is going to make the glass dip down into this uh, channel here. And so we're going to have a nasty little bump there. So I might put some of that filler on top of the servo cable and sand that off, hopefully not sand into the cable itself. So yeah, I'm hoping that the vacuum is not going to affect the way the resin will try and go in there. I don't think it's going to make too much difference. But I am also considering filling this cavity with that filler as well. Uh, maybe not entirely, but I'll put some glad wrap in there perhaps, put the filler in so that I can pull it out in a, in a nice block afterwards and maybe sand that as well. <laughs> not sure if I'm going to go to that trouble yet, but I, I just really don't want to end up with epoxy resin inside this cavity. For this connection here, what I did on the on the flying wing, this didn't really matter because this was at already inside the fuselage. Um, the cable on, that, on those servos was quite a bit longer than this. What I did on the Sky Hunter style plane was I had an extension and I embedded this ugly chunk of stuff inside the wing. And I was able to do that because it was a fairly thick wing. But the wing here is not really much thicker than the width of that servo plug thing. So I don't want to do that, and it's ugly anyway. Um, plus I only have these cables here which are twisted around, and they're not really suited to embedding in the wing like that. They just take up too much space. And it's just... Oh, and the other thing was that I've, on the Skyhunter plane, I'm having sort of connection issues every now and then. The servo will just... The servo on one wing will just go up like that, and it sticks up for a second or so, and then it returns to normal behavior. So I think it might be something to do with these plugs not connecting properly. Overall, I don't really like that idea. So... 
what I've done this time is I'm going to try and do it a little bit more professionally. I just bought a bunch of this servo cable wire and some of these thingies to crimp it properly and a crimping thing so that I can make this whatever length I like to reach inside long enough to get to the flight controller and I'm not going to have any ugly plug connections like this and I'm only going to have to solder one connection which is going to be from here to this one and it should all sit nicely in this little channel. Well I tried putting some of this plastic wrap in there and pushing the putty into the hole to try and make a nice nicely shaped block that I could pull out later but uh, it's not going to work the glad wrap or the plastic wrap just keeps pulling back out so I'm going to put this in which should at least keep the space around the uh, spline thing there free from epoxy I hope <laughs> at least it should when I put a bit, bit more putty around this as well this hole doesn't need to be filled with the filler it just needs to be sort of covered enough so that I can sand it to a smooth top so I'm not going to press down in there too much to squash it all in. This stuff's fairly easy to sand, so I'm not worried about putting quite a lot on. Ooh, I hope that works. This doesn't need to be vacuumed. As I get better at doing this, look at that area there, that's great. As I get better at doing it, I can put the glass on with a good amount of resin that doesn't really need to be like removed. Like there's not too much excess. A little bit of that tissue paper around the place could probably deal with it. But I will put it in the vacuum because just to match them up I suppose. Plus this wing was already seven grams heavier than the other one, so I don't want it to get too lopsided. But this this is really nice compared to the other one that I took out of the bag and got all crinkled here.
I'm getting a little sick of these uh, ceiling tape style ceiling. I should get some of that stuff that Nathan Knight's using. I'll put a link in the description to his channel if you want to go and watch some more of this kind of stuff. Slightly different methods, but you know, along the same lines. But uh, he's using these clips that just clip on, and basically all of this time that is spent doing that would be unnecessary. But you need a uh, connector thing that goes on here as well. You can't just stick a pipe into it like that. See if I can avoid that problem I had yesterday where I got crinkles like this in the bottom. That. See these? That's going to end up in a crinkle. I, I ignored it yesterday because I didn't think it would, it would be a problem, but it seems like it is. But what can I do about it? See if I just do this, they come back. That might be avoided if I had more breather cloth on here. I've only got one layer, which is pretty thin. But there wasn't much resin in there, so not like it was necessary. Oh. Are you still leaking? That's got it. It's always here. Okay, well that wing that I just showed you the time lapse of was actually the second one I've done and it is now sitting underneath the electric blanket because it's only about 14 degrees in here at the moment and apparently that epoxy, I read somewhere that less than 15 degrees don't even bother so the electric blanket should heat, <coughs> should heat it up to about 22 I think which is uh, pretty good so that's what I did with this one last night. We can see here we've got some horrible crinkling up there and that's why I was saying maybe I shouldn't vacuum these ones because the, there wasn't really that much excess resin on and it went from being very nice to not so nice like that and on the bottom as well quite a few crinkles like that not terrible uh, just a little bit annoying and also on here let's see if I can get this light to show you properly all of these smaller crinkles are actually bubbles so the glass is not actually flat down to the wing there which is a little bit annoying too <coughs> because that's the whole point of vacuum bagging these things isn't it to get it all nicely stuck down some areas are pretty good like this here is this is what I was looking for this is what I wanted for the whole wing and that's what I got on my tail fins so I'm not exactly sure why this one turned out so sloppy like that look at that ah, that's really annoying but I think Part of the reason might be because yesterday when I tried to put the large piece of glass on I held it up from the corners like this just with my hands from one, one from each corner and I was just sort of trying to position it like this and you don't want to pull on it too much even if the fibers are going along that way nicely so inevitably what seems to happen is you get it drooping a little bit down like that from the corners and you can't put it on straight and then you can't straighten it up once it's stuck on with the, the resin and it just gets into a real mess so I'm thinking maybe I just had too much glass in this area but I would have thought that the vacuum would still be able to stick it down anyway that's what we've got uh, so today when I was doing it just now uh, I made this thing which is just a piece of wood with some of that soft yoga mat on it and another piece of wood like that so the point of this is that you're not just holding it from two points at the corner you're holding it all the way along and it doesn't get a chance to droop down and this worked out much better actually so I'll be trying this again for placing larger sheets in future it worked out pretty good and the yoga mat is just because uh, the two pieces of wood alone didn't always grip at every point along especially when you only have two hands to hold it like that so it just sort of uh, gets a nicer grip without catching or snagging on the glass anyway um, so this bit here, oh yeah, <laughs> I think I think I've just about finished waffling for this video. But one one more waffle, hold on. Um, this bit here, I actually left that unglued because this bit here, where we have the aluminium tube to go in, is quite critical, and I really, really didn't want any resin getting inside there. As it is, there was actually a little bit of resin that crept in through one of these little gaps here. So when I put the aluminium pipe in to check it, it got stuck. But it was only a tiny bit. Whereas if I had have let the vacuum press this around like that and let the resin get into here perhaps, that would have been terrible. So what I'm going to do now is next time I mix up a, a pot of resin, I'll just put a little bit on here and just sort of glue that down with maybe with a little bit more 
glass on here because this this area here does need to be fairly strong right over the spar there so that should be fine um, anyway oh and this hole there uh, worked out quite nicely yeah very easy to open that up actually all right thanks for watching <laughs> see you next time